Well, morning, Lisa. I wasn't overly impressed myself. This is the sort of thing we didn't want in the first week. It should not have happened. We're talking about uh, a medical professional in this circumstances, a doctor, uh, who had been provided with the training material but hadn't completed it. Uh, and we're obviously very uh, distressed about that. We're very concerned for the residents, and that was my first question, how are the residents? And the, the, the good thing is that the residents are okay. Uh, it's a salient reminder, I think, to us all how important it is that we uh, follow the correct procedures, but, but also make sure that we communicate. And we've been very open about the circumstances here. We, re we reported publicly uh, what had occurred. Uh, the Deputy Chief Medical Officer, Michael Kidd, is undertaking an investigation. Uh, there's been conversations from the DCMO and the CMO, Professor uh, Paul Kelly, with the Chief Health Officer in Queensland, and those communications will continue as they should. But Mark Butler uh, says this is on you. you. The feds are running this. Well, clearly we are managing and running the rollout in aged care, and we are responsible for that, and we're happy to be upfront about that. Uh, th this event should not have occurred. Let's be very clear about that. This should not have occurred, uh, and there will be additional overlays and checks that go that are being undertaken right now to ensure we to ensure we don't see a repeat of this. And we are very very happy to share information uh, with not only the states but also the community, uh, because the thing that I do agree with the Queensland Premier about, as she's just mentioned, is that we all need to have confidence in the rollout of this vaccine. Uh, that's why it was important that we went through a full registration process with the TGA. We we're very fortunate that we we're in a position to be able to do that. Uh, we know that the vaccines are safe and they will protect you as an individual against uh, serious illness. Those Sen things remain the truth and, and are very important, but we need to make sure that we get the process of the rollout right. Uh, and it's a, it's a huge logistical exercise. We've always been frank that there will be things that occur that, when, that, that will go wrong. Um, we're, we're not happy yep. about this circumstance, uh, but we'll be doing everything we can to ensure that the proper procedures are in place in all circumstances to prevent further occurrences. Senator Colbeck, where the ABC <coughs> is broadcasting a story today that's come out of WA, terrible examples of alleged abuse against elderly. One resident left out on a roof terrace uh, for so long. Uh, another one allegedly dragged across a floor. It's alleged that it happened in January this year while a Royal Commission is underway. How can this happen? Lisa, I'm always extremely distressed when I hear any of these sorts of reports. It's the thing that, uh, that worries me all the time and uh, my determination to reform the aged care sector so that uh, we can have the best systems in place to prevent them. I, I don't want to go into the particulars of this case. I've had a number of briefings about it and some of the issues are contested. But quite frankly, we shouldn't continue to get these sorts of reports. Uh, we need to have an aged care system in this country that is world's best, that the systems that support it and the residents, most importantly, uh, is one that provides a high quality of safe care. Uh, I don't want to see any more of these reports. Uh, the Aged Care Quality and Safety Commission has provided um, a, a, both a sanction and a notice to agree, to agree uh, on Regis. Uh, there, are, there are coroner's reports that are being undertaken as well and of course there's been a police investigation and a further in, uh, independent report that's being uh, commissioned by Regis themselves. Uh, I look forward to seeing the outcomes of those things but uh, the determination that I have and we have as a government, particularly with the Royal Commission report, due so imminently is to reform the system uh, that supports senior Australians for the better so that we, d we just don't see a repeat of these sorts when of When are we going to see the Royal Commission report? When's it going to be made public? So the Royal Commission uh, reports to government this week. Uh, we're still finalising the, fo the processes around uh, its final tabling, uh, but that will be very soon. Uh, we're, we're not looking to, to delay this at all. We will be looking to make a uh, response um, particularly in a, in a more formal uh, and a, a, a broader sense uh, in the budget later this year. So uh, it's a significant piece of work. There were 240 odd recommendations, uh, draft recommendations from council assisting to the commissioners when the, that information was provided late last year. So I'm expecting a, a significant report. 
that uh, has a, a forensic look at the sector across all elements of it, not just residential care, but home care uh, and, and the services that are provided, its interaction with the um, broader health system as well. So there is a significant piece of reform to be done off the back of this, this report that is due this week. All right, Senator Colbeck, we'll have to leave it there. I know you're also the Sports Minister. Just very quickly, I suppose you're pretty happy about this decision that's come out of the IOC today. Look, I think we can all be excited about that. We are now in the very fortunate position to be the sole country, the sole city, state that is in targeted dialogue with the IOC. <clears throat> it does give us something to look forward to. Um, if you think of young athletes now who are you know, in, in their, their, their formative years, if we can win this, we give them something really to look forward to, the opportunity to compete in Olympic Games on their home soil. We know that it has real benefits in the lead up and also post the Games. Okay. So we'll be working with Queensland and the South East uh, councils to put our best foot forward to try and win this bid now. Senator Colbeck, thank you. Thanks, Lisa.